great for the public and it's great for our part of our, our history as well. It's never been done before, so uh, we do hope that the plan um, is the good plan. It's a place filled with history, but what's about to be recovered isn't in one of these 300 jail cells. It's below the surface. 20 metres of vertical ladders, knee-deep water and pitch-black darkness. What it is, no one really knows. This is extreme excavating underground. Pretty dirty, we're all going to get pretty dirty. We've been invited on a tour of the Fremantle tunnels like they've never been seen before, retrieving a little piece of history Perth prisoners left behind. Climbing, crawling and drifting our way back in time. They are part of the history of WA and the prison system and that's worthwhile keeping. What they are, WA Museum's Richard Garcia can only guess. What they're actually used for, I don't think anyone really does know. And it's only through research that you actually do find the true purpose of these things. In the late 1880s, the tunnels were used to provide Fremantle's main water supply. What now looks like two rusty metal sheets, Richard says may have been the key for workers getting from A to B. So they seem to think that they were actually dragged behind the workmen and probably with their tools in there. The coracles, said to be more than 125 years old, are about to see light for the first time in more than a century. So uh, we can assume that they were probably from around about the turn of the century. The WA Museum, together with the Fremantle Prison, now have one dirty but delicate job. When the water level had dropped, that we would try to retrieve them. So hopefully when we tip them over, we won't break them. Underground, prison curator Olympia Kaliti is overseeing their removal. Trying to keep them intact is vital. We're going to lift the first one onto the pallet. Um, there's a, we created a structure um, to try and support them. And there's light at the end of the tunnel, winched to the surface through the tunnel's emergency shaft. Oh, it's very, very special. Um, it's unique and we're certainly very lucky. And every time we get to conserve something, uh, it's, it's a great enjoyment for a curator. One down, one to go. Once they're out, we, you know, we really want to know exactly where they are and how they look. So Richard, what would have happened if it was sitting in salt water? Um, I don't think we would have found very much here at all at that stage. Uh, the salt water would have attacked it. We might have found a few copper rivets holding the frame together, but basically there would have been nothing left. With the second framework safely on dry surface, their true state can be evaluated. Firstly, they'll be cleaned off as, as much of the mud as possible, and there's a lot of mud on there. And uh, then they'll have to do, do some tests on them just to make sure there's no salt in the, in the iron. And their journey isn't over yet. The coracles are set to make the trip to the WA Museum's lab where they'll be cleaned and conserved. Everything was ready for us when we came today and everything went very well. And they'll be stabilised and then it's up to the, uh, WA, uh, the prison society then to work out how they want to display them. For these history buffs, it's just another day at the office. It's actually on your start. Um, while we're relieved that they're up, and for us here at the prison, it's kind of the end of this day. Uh, it's only the beginning in terms of discoveries. It's fantastic. It really is great. You know, it's part of WA's history.